The windlass mechanism is a crucial biomechanical process that involves the tightening of the plantar fascia. The tightening creates a taut and rigid foot that can withstand and transfer high impact force. It plays an important role in stabilizing the foot and providing support to the arch during activities such as walking, running, and jumping. So let's dive a little deeper into how this mechanism works. You see, the plantar fascia is a thick band of tissue that runs along the bottom of the foot, connecting the heel to the toes. When the foot is in a relaxed position, the plantar fascia is slack and the arch is relatively flat. However, as the foot is dorsiflexed during the push-off phase of walking or running, the plantar fascia is pulled into a taut transition as it transitions to plantar flexion, causing the arch to rise and become more rigid. This increase in arch height and stiffness helps to transmit force more efficiently from the foot to the leg, allowing for more efficient movement. The zenith or the peak position of the windlass mechanism is the midpoint between the transition from dorsiflexion to plantar flexion. The greatest stabilization happens at the combination of toe extension combined with plantar flexion of the ankle. A great everyday example of the windlass mechanism is a vertical hop, like when you're jumping rope. And that is how it translates to walking and running, seeing each step off as engaging in an alternating hop. But instead of hopping vertically, you incorporate a horizontal lean by shifting your center of gravity at the pelvis. The angle of this lean will determine your speed going forward. We can look at starting blocks because they can be seen as a simulacrum of function of the windlass mechanism, creating a rigid launch pad, providing a low shin angle that enables you to transmit the highest force your body can produce to move horizontally. This low angle puts more energy into going forwards than upwards. That is why your top speed is also determined by your ability to recover from a steep angle of approach. It's really how far can you bring the center of gravity forward without collapsing and falling flat on your face. The faster that you're able to go will need a faster or lower angle. And that's why oftentimes people will talk about leading low as you sprint off to exert most of the energy going forward instead of pushing it going upward. When watching a sprinter's stride, their foot strike lands slightly behind their hips and the angle of attack places their force directly through the balls of the foot, not the toes. This requires the toes to get out of the way using toe extension at full speed. That is also why that extension backwards also has the affiliated extension forward with the arm. That's why the faster we go is the more that we bring the shoulders higher and further away. This is where the reach comes from during our stride. This is why companies have designed toe spring and a raised heel into their footwear to simulate the windlass mechanism. Think of it as a lesser starting block. Toe spring for athletic footwear is designed to aid the extension of the toes, but it only makes your foot mechanics worse. Toe spring is a band-aid that further limits your range of motion for the full expression of extension nor flexion of your toes, leaving your toes stuck in a purgatory angle. You see, they've taken a multi-jointed component and placed them in a stiff canoe while expecting them to exhibit the same level of dexterity as your fingers. And do I need to remind you that your feet are your hands? Your fastest throw comes from the flexion off the tips of your fingers. Your fastest stride or highest jump will be delivered at the tips of your toes, or in other words, at full plantar flexion, which is where the glutes and the toes connect. The windlass mechanism is engaged in movement throughout the actions of the muscles in the foot and the lower leg. They contract to pull the fascia taut when the foot is dorsiflexed for the efficient transfer of force through the foot and into the leg allowing for effective movement and propulsion. Calf strength is important, but not only as a lever to transition 
to plantar flexion, but also to isometrically freeze the foot into this rigid, windless position. Calf muscles combined with a strong ability to extend or lift the toes gives you the greatest ability to reach your top speed potential because it allows you to maintain the steepest forward angle. Well, how can you use the windless mechanism for walking? You see, it's falsely believed that the windless mechanism is engaged in heel-to-toe walking, but this study has disproven that assumption. In fact, if you observe heel-to-toe walking, there is no motion towards plantar flexion involved therefore no chance of engaging the windless mechanism. But with a forefoot method of walking, you'll notice how I lift and lean forward by extending or lifting the toes and the heel almost simultaneously while leaning slightly forward. Remember, your center of gravity determines your speed. If you've been wearing conventional shoes for any time and living a sedentary lifestyle, your windless mechanism may need a tune-up. There are a few exercises and techniques that can help strengthen the muscles involved in the windless mechanism and improve its function. The first exercise are calf raises. Calf raises work the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles, which attach to the plantar fascia and play a key role in the windless mechanism. To perform a calf raise, stand with your feet hip width apart and slowly raise your heels off of the ground. But instead of straight legs, you want to bend at the knee. This will place more of an emphasis on the windless mechanism activation. Be sure to lock out at the top of the plantar flex position, then lower them back down. You can do this exercise with both feet together or one foot at a time, and you'll get more out of it using an elevated surface. The second exercise is elevated toe curls. Toe curls work the muscles in the bottom of the foot and help to strengthen the plantar fascia. To perform a toe curl, place a towel or small cloth on the ground and use your toes to scrunch it up with your heels elevated, then release and repeat. The third exercise is to develop toe extension. I want you to lean onto a support wall or post with a bent knee. Raise your heel as high as possible, then raise your toes as high as possible. Repeat for reps or hold for a duration of time. As you get better, increase the angle forward and repeat. 